In this lecture, we'll be talking about something called filters. Filters provide a way to perform text transformation, such as capitalizing letters or doing virtually anything we'd like. Filters can be used both within string interpolation, but also within the vBind directives expression. As always, let's dive straight into an example. So I have a message data property, which I output using string interpolation. Suppose I want to output the message in all uppercase letters. The first thing I want to do is to introduce a new top level property on the view instance, namely the filters property. So let's add this object like that. This property is semantically the same as the methods property in that it takes filter names as keys and functions as the values. In this case, I want to add a filter named uppercase, so I'll use this as the key. The value is a function which receives the value to transform as its first argument. So I'll add this function and a value as the first parameter. And within this function, I have to transform the value being passed in as the first argument and return the transformed value. So I can return value dot to string just to make sure we're working with a string and not a number, for instance. And on this, I can call to upper case like so. There's just one more thing I want to do to this function is that up here at the beginning, I want to check if we do actually have a value. And if not, I'll just return an empty string. So this is just a small precaution. Let's say undefined is passed in as the value. Then our toString method invocation is not going to work and it's going to result in an error. So if this is the case, we just return an empty string and nothing is displayed. So at least that's better than our code failing. So using this filter is very simple. Simply add a pipe symbol after the string interpolation expression followed by the name of the filter. In this example, I will add a pipe followed by the name uppercase matching the name of my filter. We'll now see the message being displayed in uppercase letters. What happens is that the evaluation of the expression before the pipe message in this case is passed to the filter as the first argument and the return value of the filter is then output. Filters can actually be chained, so we could add another pipe and filter name after the one we have just added. The second filter would then receive the result of the first filter as its first argument. This is useful if you want to apply multiple transformations to your text, and this also allows you to keep filters very specialized, such that they only do one transformation each. There's one more thing I'd like to show you. Since filters are just JavaScript functions, we can actually use them as such. This allows us to pass in our own arguments in case we need some more flexibility. Let's say that we want our filter to take an argument that decides whether or not only the first character should be uppercased instead of the whole string. To do that, we first need to add the parameter to the filter and make a few changes to the code. So here I'll add a only first character parameter, which should be a boolean value. And now we just need to restructure the code a bit. So I'll first take the part converting the value to a string, move it up here because I'm going to need to do this twice, depending on the evaluation of the boolean. So I want to check whether or not the second parameter is true. So I'll do that here. If this is the case, then we only want to uppercase the first character of the input and leave the rest as is. So I can return value dot char at at index zero to take the first character. And this character I want to convert to uppercase. So this right here just means that we are converting the first character of the string to uppercase. But I also need the rest of the string. So for this, I can use the slice method with an index of one. 
and since I haven't specified an int index, this is just going to take the rest of the string and concatenate these two. And if that if statement is not true, then I can take this down here, move it up, return value dot to uppercase. And that should be all we need to change in the filter. So within the template, we can now use the filter as a normal function with parentheses and add our argument. In this case, I'll add true. And note that this argument is actually passed as the second argument. And this is because view always passes the value to transform as the first argument automatically. Now we should only see the first character being uppercased. If we change the boolean to false, we should see the message in all uppercase letters. So we can pass any expression as arguments to our filter, be it the name of a data property, a shorthand if statement, or a string. So that's it for filters. That was pretty easy, right? Before ending this lecture, I just want to mention that filters are intended for transforming text. So if you need any complex data transformations, then you are usually better off using a computer property. That being said, let's solve a few exercises with filters.